Hello, everyone. Thank you all for joining us. My name is Bartłomiej Walszak. I'm a senior software engineer at Respawn. And in this presentation, I'm going to discuss different methods of using physics for animated characters in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. So what is actually physical animation? So instead of simply playing an animation, we can use physics to move ragdoll bodies to follow the animation pose. And one of the consequences of that is that with physics, we can include collisions. So we play the same animation while at the same time we can detect collisions and prevent clipping. So in this video, we have two characters playing the same animation. So the character on the left just simply plays the animation as usual, but the second character on the right, it uses physics to play the same moves. So we can see that the character on the left just clips through the environment, while the character on the right avoids collisions by slightly changing the animation. So in general, we have three main methods of driving physics to follow the animation. So the first method is using motors. So the motor is a part of the joint constraint between regular bodies. And they use a specified animation target to generate the local force between connected bodies. And that local force drives bodies to follow the animation target. The second method is using velocities. So in this case, we compute a velocity needed to move the body from one place to another dur during a given frame time. And in this way, uh, we, we can force the body to move to reach to the animation target. And the third method is using constraints. So in this case, we create a new constraint between a dynamic body of the ragdoll and the animation target. And all parameters for this new constraint, uh, they define how it, like we force the dynamic body to follow the animation target. And in our game, we started adding physical animation using motors. So this is the first method on this list. And we added it first on Stormtroopers when they are force pulled by the hero. In this case, he body is kinematic, so it strictly follows the animation, but all the other bodies are driven by motors. And red pose, so red objects, they represent a pose only from animation, so without any physics added. And we can observe how, thanks to physical animation, um, legs are nicely colliding and interacting actually with an environment, so two-way interaction. And pure animation without any physics added, so red objects, would simply just clip for collisions. And our game uses, uses uh, Unreal Engine 4 and NVIDIA Physics as the physics engine. And I would like to share some essential details of our implementation. So first of all, there are a few physics parameters that are important to set up correctly. So the first one is the number of solver iterations. So default values in Unreal are eight and one. Uh, and for motors, nothing really works as you would expect with these settings. And in our game and overall, when you create your own implementation, you need to go higher with these settings. You need to find the best one that fits your implementation and your, uh, your needs. And in our case, it was 64 and 32. Also going forward, we are using a flag E acceleration that, which is enabled for every joint. Uh, it makes it easier to set up all parameters uh, related to mass, especially. And the topic of friction or restitution. So these parameters, they tend to cause a lot of problems for physical animation uh, because higher values of friction, um, it, they make harder for physics to reach the animation target. And by default, we use just low values for friction and restitution. And in the case actually of that force pulled stormtrooper, we actually use no friction at all to make it easy for the physics to reach the animation target. And another big topic here in terms of implementation details is continuous collision detection. So it needs to be enabled to have really high quality results. 
but it is better to disable CCD between bodies in the same rectal. Uh, the problem overall, big problem here is that with CCD enabled, constraint projection does not work very well in physics. So what we, what we did, we actually ended up doing that we wrote our own piece of code to perform linear projection for all joints. So just for every joint, we kind of bring two bodies together if they separate too much above a given threshold. So in our game, after force pulled stormtroopers, another case where we started to use physical animation is the death of stormtroopers. So here, we just simply play a death animation. Uh, and as you can see, we can, uh, like we have really big flips and acrobatic movements from animations. And in, in the base case, we were just enabling red rectal physics uh, near the very end of the animation to have that like free fall with the gravity. And this solution, it worked really well for open space, but close to other collisions, as we can see here in this video, it does not give good results. So limbs are clipping through collisions and kind of overall the sequence, it does not look very natural. So to improve that depth sequence, we enable physical animation on the whole character and we are using motors for all joints. But the main question was what to do about the root body, which is in this case, the hip body. Uh, it can't be kinematic because it would easily penetrate walls as the animation would just simply go through the wall. But we wanted still like to make that root body uh, to follow the animation strictly to perform these big acrobatic flips. So we need both collisions and we need follow, we need that root body to follow the animation. So the solution was to keep the hip body as physically simulated body and create a new constraint for that body. And the constraint is between the hip body and the given animation target. So this new, new constraint kind of drags the physics body of the hip bone to follow the animation target. And for that constraint, for that new constraint, we remove all the grease of freedom. Uh, so we lock both linear and angular movement for that constraint. It gives the strongest matching with the animation to perform all these big flips. And the question was, with this new solution, what happens when we have an obstacle? So in other words, uh, what to do if the hip body hits the wall and the animation target still pushes forward? So what to do about that physical body, which is just colliding right now with the wall? So what we do, we monitor the distance between the actual position of the root body and that desired animation target. And if the constraint drive for that hip body is unable to reach the target within some threshold, we just turn ragdoll to a free fall mode with the gravity. So this is how it looks, uh, the same sequence using physical animation. So we can see how the root body detects that it's unable to move through the wall and it turns the ragdoll into falling with gravity. So it worked really nice for our case. So these previous scenarios, they were focused on matching the animation pose closely and supporting collisions. So that was the case for stormtroopers in our game. Uh, but right now I would like to move um, to physical animation we did for the hero. And for the hero, uh, actually collisions ended up as not an important feature. And actually the fluidity of natural movement uh, and the smoothness of natural movement was actually the top priority for us. And so we started with a ledge hang for the hero. So the special navigation for the hero and here hands on and forearms are kinematic. So we strictly follow the animation and all the other bodies are fully physics driven just by motors. So we can, yeah, we can nicely observe how just pure animation pose. So these red objects is more static and physics 
is adding this nice looking layer of motion. Also because of that, actually animators could focus more on just on core poses and add and use physical animation to add that additional fluidity to the motion. So it worked really well. Uh, we had really gr great results with these settings. Uh, so using only motors uh, to drive physics uh, to the animation pose really gives nice looking results. It, was, it, was, it really adds a lot of fluidity to the motion. And we tried to extend the same approach to other hero navigations. And the results were not so great. Um, so I have an example of sliding with uh, weak motor settings. So whenever there's an obstacle or some fast changing motion, the hero just swings way too much. Uh, so we tried with stronger motors. In that case, character was just too steep and the results were also not really satisfying us. And we, we also tried different approaches, mixing motors with velocities for all bodies, but still we didn't have substantially better results. So we tried something different. Um, we came up with a different solution. We tried back uh, weaker motor settings uh, to get that springy fluid behavior. And the new solution for us was a local space blend with animation pose. And in case of this sliding, um, we just blend 50% of the physics pose. So here is the final result. And it started to look really better, especially the feeling of it. Uh, when you were controlling the hero with the stick, the character really nicely reacts uh, to your movement. It isn't too stiff. At the same time, reactions are not too swingy. And here is how it looks in the final game. Uh, we have different pose for the hero, um, but the whole uh, this action sequence, really uh, physical animation gives a lot of additional uh, fluidity and reactions to every uh, change in movement direction or every, every collision that happens. So with this new kind of approach, um, we started to use, uh, to use it in other cases. So here is climbing where uh, we blend just 40% of physics. So here kind of the final result is subtle, uh, but it gives that nice fluidity to the whole movement. Uh, here we have wind fields, and in this case, we blend 45% of physics with the animation. Uh, and here ropes, uh, where we blend again 40% of physics. So we can see how ni like legs nicely have some inertia after we stop the, the movement. And additionally, it gives really nice uh, additional motion to the hero. And after that, we started again to have a challenging cases. So this one was Balam's beam hang. It was really challenging to make it right. We can see here that it is 50% uh, physics blend but it was really hard to find stable movement for this case. Uh, it is because of these like very aggressive characters moves and the character just swings way too much and the whole final position of the hero is just way too off from the animation. So we tried here a different approach. So what we did, we added a partial velocity drive for just one body to stabilize the movement. So here's the code how we did that. So we compute first the desired linear velocity. So this is the velocity needed to fully move the body from the current position to the target position from the animation in one frame. Then we read the current linear velocity of the body and we perform just linear interpolation between that current velocity and the desired velocity computed in the first line. So this is the way we kind of like feed current velocity, whatever is happening from physics point of view currently to that body, to the 
desired velocity that is just tries to move exactly as it is, uh, as the movement looks from the animation. And the variable t is, ju is just the amount, it is just the amount of the blend. For the balance beam, uh, we use 50% uh, of the velocity drive for the heap body. And here are the results of this new solution. So using this partial velocity drive, uh, just for the heap body, nicely stabilizes the whole movement, actually without affecting the behavior for all other bodies. So we kind of keeps this fluid behavior for all other joints, which are just fully driven by motors, and still uh, we don't go with too swingy motion. So we can really see how how nicely the overall the character reacts to the motion. So these previous cases, they were enhancing some special navigation state for the hero. Uh, but what about the ground movement? So uh, we tried to do something with a uh, normal hero uh, walking or running on the ground, uh, but we did not see much opportunity for improvements in running or walking cycles, except that starts stops and turnings were promising to try our new technology. So uh, here is the video and we focused only on the hero's arms. Uh, and overall, uh, we have more complex logic uh, when to start a specific physical animation, either for start, stop or turning. Uh, and every physical animation lasts for two seconds and blends out during that time. It is a subtle effect, as we can see on the video, but it smooths out some transitions between different animations and adds some inertia to the movement. Uh, and, and here we achieve really good results with blending just 40% of physics. So we can see how sometimes the arm uh, lags behind the red object, so the anim so lags behind animation target, or uh, after a while, it kind of like with additional inertia, just just is a bit farther than the animation target. So it, it's really giving nice little touch, physical touch to the whole movement. Still, however, for uh, for some cases, for some occasional things. Uh, we had a too big difference between physics pose and the desired animation pose. So uh, we didn't want to add any velocity drive uh, because it would change the overall behavior for motors. And we came up with something new. So uh, we added again a new constraint, this time between a wrist body and the animation target. The constraint allows for free angular movement uh, but it has a distance limit for linear uh, movement. So in our case, it was 10 to 5 units. So the arm is free to move within the threshold, um, in this case of 25 units, with free angular movement and linear movement limited to that distance. Uh, so if it is too far away from the target, this constraint, it brought Back. It, it, it is bringing back the constraint, is bringing back closer to the animation target. Uh, if it is within the distance threshold, the arm is free to move um, as desired. So with that constraint added, we can see on this image that um, the arm is not so far away as it is on the, on the left image. So really, it is giving us results exactly what we needed here. And we had also a similar uh, solution to simulate physics on the hero's arms during walking on the balance beam. So in this case, uh, it gives really a nice soft feeling that reflects that careful movement along the balance beam. It was working really nicely in this case. And the third big case of uh, physical animation in our game 
is body droid bd1 so this is a special character companion droid and spends most of the time attached to the hero's back and we wanted to add a kind of relaxed physical animation uh, to make the droid react naturally to every hero's move uh, so here is how it looks in the game so the bottom parts of the droid's legs are kinematic and all the other bodies have full physics and there's no animation blending so this is 100 percent physics and there are no angular limits for any joints so we can see how yeah nicely uh, and naturally the droid behaves with some additional inertia and it reacts to the hero's moves uh, either during action or just movement uh, it is especially visible here during sliding uh, when the droid yeah nicely swings with the hero it was working really really well here still for some very fast hero's moves uh, we had some problem to support physics on the droid uh, physical animation could become unstable in such cases um, so somehow we had to restrict droids moves so again we add a new constraint but this time between the droids head and the animation target but this time we change the distance limit the distance threshold dynamically so if the body moves slowly the distance is getting bigger to allow more free movement but if the body moves too fast the distance to allow that free movement is getting closer to zero to keep the head very near the animation target and actually in the case of strict zero for very high velocity uh, we just switch the constraint mode from limited to locked to give the strongest watching and this is how it looks um, for uh, for this um, hero like very fast movement here uh, so we have a comparison on the left there is no constraint enabled uh, so we can observe how the droid's head clips almost completely through the hero during that uh, little moment yeah exactly here <clears throat> and on the right where the constraint for the droid's head is enabled we can see that it nicely stays in place and still uh, the droid keeps his physical behavior at slower speeds so we don't really um, alter somehow this uh, behavior during um, slower movement but whenever very high speed action happens that could potentially uh, make uh, the droid uh, to, to, to clip through the hero or just become unstable that constraint um, is limiting almost to zero its uh, distance threshold to keep the droid's head uh, where it should be where the animation target is uh, overall actually that implementation of physical animation for the droid was really challenging uh, there were a few reasons behind it so um, we have 85 percent scale uh, on the droid when it's attached to the hero and uh, working and dealing with some custom scale settings is never really fun uh, we had also a problem like um, the order of the execution where, with attaching so uh, potentially uh, we have uh, physics running on the droid when also uh, we have physics active on the hero so that was actually the case on uh, during sliding navigation when we had hero with some physical animation and we had also the droid with physical animation uh, so there were really challenges to try to um, properly execute it in order um, also we had uh, a problem that uh, the droid's physical animation was looking a bit differently with variable frame time we had good looking behavior at 30 fps but we had very stiff behavior at 60 fps so all these settings all these things were making the droid really challenging in terms of implementation and we came up with these solutions so in our game 
every physical animation which does not require collisions, which is the case of the droid and in many cases for the hero, is running within its own physics scene. And the physics scene is simulated at a fixed frame time, regardless of the hardware, and we add predicted movement for the remaining time left to simulate. And because we have these exclusive physics scenes, we can control when they are simulated. So we run physical animation on the hero first, uh, and having these results from the hero, uh, we prepare and run um, the physical animation on the droid. So this, th this was our third big case for physical animation um, in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I'd like to summarize um, the things I, I presented uh, here. So um, I described a few important details about physics integration. Uh, so the numbers of iterations, frictional institution, and CCD with constraints projection. And uh, I described how we use the constraint to drive the ragdoll root body, the heat body. Uh, so that was the case for stormtroopers. And if that root body diverges above some threshold from the animation target, we turn the whole ragdoll to a freefall mode. We also use a lot of um, local space blending between pure animation and motor-driven bodies. And actually, we prefer uh, weaker motor settings to achieve that fluid behavior. Uh, we also, in some cases, we also use partial velocity drive for just one body to stabilize the movement. Um, and we create a new constraint um, between ragdoll body and the animation target to set movement, some movement limits, uh, like it was the case for a, a wrist bone for the ground navigation for the hero uh, and for the droid's head. And in, in, case of the, in the case of the droid's head, we also dynamically change that movement limit depending on the, on the head velocity. And kind of implementation detail, but it was important also for us to, to make it right so that we have separate physics scenes for the attached droid to control better the flow of, of the physical animation. And there are a few things actually I wish I knew before we started to work on physical animation. Uh, so at the beginning, it is really good to know. Uh, it is a challenge, but it is good to know what is your goal of adding physical animation in your game? Uh, do you want to support collisions while playing the animation? Uh, or do you want to change visual outcome of the movement? Because both cases, they require quite different approach and different set of settings, different features from physical animation. And all, all physics parameters, they kind of influence each other. Uh, you change one parameter and it makes uh, something else to work better or worse. And you, you need to revi revisit previously failed cases all the time. You need to check your new knowledge. Is it working better or worse? Uh, just to apply your new solutions to some previous cases. And when you have active ragdoll uh, physics, which is active almost all the time, Things that normally work, they kind of tend to break. Uh, so for example, order of updates for your actors, entities, components, uh, some dependencies between physics and other systems. So for example, cloth needs to be after physics for some cases or animation notifies. These are things that uh, when you don't have physics running all the time, they kind of work correctly. But when you enable physics and you have a lot of dependencies with other systems, uh, you need to really be careful with these things to make it uh, work correctly. I'd like to uh, highlight and mention uh, two previous great presentation on a similar topic. Uh, so this is uh, Physics Animation in Uncharted 4 at GDC 2017, and Physics Driven Ragdolls and Animation ADA uh, from GDC 2018. Please check these great presentations to find some other implementation details, how they did uh, physics for their characters. And Respawn is hiring 
uh, please check our website, respawn.com careers. Uh, and I strongly encourage you to do it. So uh, Respawn is always hiring. So please check, maybe there's something interesting for you. So thank you so much. And I'm happy to answer all your questions.